Hi friends, this is Amanda. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Michigan. Welcome to my channel. Thanks for being here. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different, a little bit scary for me because this is very different for me, but I'm going to try to really slow things down and show you um, a technique. This is blending with blender brushes. Um, I I hope you can watch and listen at the same time. That's a skill too, especially after you've had children. Um, but I, uh, this is going to be a little bit choppy because uh, my voiceover, because I'm going to, you know, try to do this in spurts and really try to explain how I blend with blending brushes. I'm going to use Nature's Harvest, which is a brand new set out in the new mini catalog. It's gorgeous, uh, like Quiet Meadow. And, um, well, let's just see. You know what? Please let me know if I'm a crummy teacher uh, and just only can, you know, show you different uh, cards and not techniques, please let me know. I'd like to be better. So today we're going to um, die cut some of these elements from Nature's Harvest. I'm going to do it in black. Now this one here has some detail that can be die cut and I cannot for the life of me find my embossing mat. It's somewhere, you know, Stampin' Up! had some problems with theirs. So um if you don't have one, this is what I found. I took two shims, which are just junk pieces of cardstock, and I placed them in my die cutting machine with my die. And the uh, paper was so stuff stiff in there that I got the impression. And that's not the best way to do it, but it worked today because I couldn't find my embossing folder. I'm going to start out with an A7 size um, panel. And I like to go bigger than what I'm going to need. So this is a five by seven. I would rather start big and then go smaller. So even um, an eight by six or an eight by five and a half, whatever you can do to give yourself that wiggle room, because you might not like a side, an area that you want to cut off uh, that you can't really hide anyway. And that's one way to do it is just to cut it off. And I will be doing that in this video for sure. I'm going to take a piece of post-it note and I'm going to uh, start with uh, evergreen forest, evergreen, evening evergreen. Sorry. Uh, I did dap off a tiny bit on my silicone mat here. This is called a watercolor, water media mat, a water media mat. It's from Waffle Flower. It does stain. So if that bothers you, this isn't for you. Find something, even even a glass mat will work well for this. And you want to just slide on to your card. My edges are going to be darker, and that's fine for me. This actual panel right here is going to be the darkest I can get it. Now, I could do direct to paper, but I wanted to show you that I'm inking up my my brush very, very well. I'm using a little bit of pressure because I'm holding my brush with my two fingers and pushing down just a tiny bit. I am not bending my bristles though. My hand actually got tired because I've been doing this for all day. So I did switch hands. It's not that big of a deal. My left hand is very much weaker than my right. So you know it's not going to give as much pressure. Now I'm going to go through and blend until I have very little on my blending brush. And how I know that is because that white area will show a little bit more green. And once it stops showing green, then I know that there's not much ink on my blending brush. But your blending brushes hold a whole ton of ink. So re-inkers might be necessary. I'm going in circles. Circles what work best for me. And it's always good to have your ink not so wet. And I know that's silly, but if you really ink up your... um blending brushes, it's gonna, there's ink going to be on there. So it's going to reactivate a little bit, but mm, you know what I mean? So there's going to be some bristle, some bristle marks because your ink is wet. Now I'm going to move my post-it tape down and post-it tape does not like to stick to inked up spots and especially <laughs> wet ink. So I'm going to use some purple tape on my post-it tape. You can also use just a piece of cardstock here. Then I'm going to use a very small circle and use it for my um, sun. Now, do you see how dry my 
uh, pumpkin pie looks. Can you see where I inked, where I grabbed all the ink from on my pad? That's because I really inked up my pad. Do you see kind of like those scratchy marks? That's because it's wet. So don't fear. We're going to put a base layer of, of ink down, one full layer. Reinkers are your friends when you're going to be ink blending because you want to keep them nice and juicy. I'm going to switch here to Bumblebee because when I looked, yellow is on top of orange for the sky. So I'm going to use one base layer of ink. Now I'm going in circles. I'm not really worrying about anything right now because I'm putting a base layer down. But I am going to overlap because overlapping is your friend. This is not a one one pass and you're done. No, I'm going to now circle over my my area and add some. Look, I'm going right back over to where my yellow and my orange meet. Why? Because they need to blend. I'm going to keep adding more and more ink, inking up my brushes, changing to a different color. I'm not looking for an ombre effect on this one. I apologize. We'll do an ombre effect on the next one. It's all about how much pressure you use on your brush, where you start your um, brush, how you fan out. But right now, I just want to put some ink on my paper, get it down there, a first layer, make sure that I go over and over and over. Even after I have very little ink on my, my brush, I'm still going over. And I do not want to judge my panel when it's still very wet. Also, you should know that the video camera brings out minute changes and it's going to look for, you know, blending and it's going to look a, a ton times worse than it actually does in real life. I wish I could show you how much better it looks in real life, but just know that it's going to be 10 times better. Um, all right. So now I'm going to be adding some strips. I'm going to go a little bit in my orange. I'm sorry, a little bit in my bumblebee, my yellow, just to darken those up. My bumblebee, and my uh, daffodil, delightably, or maybe crush gray. I didn't like it. It wasn't as uh, dark for me. So I'm going to here with some red. All right, this is real red. I could even go to Cajun Craze or even, heck, Cherry Cobbler. Now, I'm putting it down and then I'm going over and over and over in circles. Watch when I go over my sun. I'm going to go over. It's not done. Over, 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 over. Kind of expanding each time out so that the that I make wider and wider circles. That gets me a little bit um, softer edge. All right. Now I'm like, well, I want this dark right here. So I'm going to go back and forth. That really doesn't help too well, but my hand got tired. It's okay. I have the ability to blend and blend and blend. If you don't like something, keep blending. Uh, I can't tell you that it, it's going to work. But it, the, there's you know, two sides of the paper for this. So just keep blending. You can always add darker colors, more colors. And besides, we're talking about a 30 cent piece of paper. Practice makes perfect. All right. Again, I'm going over edges. Uh, you know, I'm going all the way over my orange with my yellow. I am really blending and scrubbing these two colors together. Now, for a night sky, I want some contrast in my sky. So I really want this to look like there's clouds and movement and, you know, dimension. So watch, see that I'm scrubbing. Let's talk about blending brushes. Before Sampin' Up! came out with blending brushes, I already had mine. I'm not the type of person that will just buy blending brushes because Stampin' Up! has them. I'm sorry, Stampin' Up! You came out second. These are the blending brushes that I have. Love them. Not to mention they look gorgeous on my uh, desk with all those beautiful colors. I love having one blender brush for one color. Okay. What else can I say? Did I mention that you need to practice? That you need to realize that it doesn't look as bad as you think it does? It actually looks amazing. Now, I screw up big time here. I didn't put my... Um, my tape far enough down. So when I pull this up, which I probably am not going to show you, there's going to be a line here. I also did not let my uh, 
ink dry enough to come to a stark white area. And I have stuff on my blending brush that's not the right color. Now, here's the thing. If you say to me, I've washed it, I've tried it, there's no possible way that I can blend. The answer is Bristol Smooth Paper. Very easy to blend on. There are some downsides to it. Not only is it stinking expensive, but the blend after it's done, you're not going to like the texture of it. Uh, Stampin' Up's cardstock is much, much, much smoother. But I'm using absolutely no pressure here. None whatsoever. Even though I have my fingers there, that's just to stable it. Do you see how light the, um, the oh, I think this is Daffodil Delight is? That's because I'm not putting any pressure on it. This is your last result. Bristol Smooth Cardstock for me is my last result. If I definitely cannot get something the way that I want it, I'll do it on Bristol. Now, I am adding a little bit more pressure here, so I'm getting a little bit more darker color. I will show you when I'm done the difference in texture. Um, it's just, uh, well, you know what? We'll watch. So anyways, lighter, bl lighter blending, lighter, lighter hand. I'm still doing um, a base coat, and I'm still... Uh, Going to make that light and then go over. Here we go with pumpkin pie again. Do you see where I brought out all that ink? It's going to be neat. It's going to need to be re-inked. I've only done two cards so far. Well, maybe three, but that's it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to start just a tiny bit off my paper, not a lot, and then I'm going to do circles. I'm going to add intensely. Where I want my ink most intense, I'm going to start there. I'm not going to start um, where I don't want my ink the the heaviest. So the sides for me are going to be perfect because, first of all, I'm going to cut those off. I've already cut my paper too large, so I know. Now here, please put your circle or whatever down first. It's going to help you a lot. I wanted a yellow and not to mess up again under my circle, so I'm going to try here. This was a used piece of post-it tape, so I'm going to go grab something that maybe isn't so used. Yes, I still take um, a, a, a semi-used one, but I'm cheap. What can I say? Post-it tape is a little bit more expensive. You do you. Um, post-it tape, masking tape, best you can do. I'm going to realize that in a little bit and, you know, do do what I can do and, and really push it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to make this stick no matter what. Okay, I have my base layer of red down. Now I'm going to darken it up. I want this area right here at the darkest, so I'm going to start right there. Now because I am uh, over this sticky part that doesn't want to stick, I'm going to pounce my brush. It's going to give it a whole different texture. If you want a little bit more texture, pounce your brush up and down really quickly, easy peasy. Now, again, large circles over my area. I'm going to scrub the sections. When I'm when I put my orange my red here, I'm going to go back with a different color and scrub those two together. This is I believe Bumblebee is my go-to um yellow and crush curry. Really great blend. Um uh, Daffodil Delight worked really well here. I should have uh, brought in my Cajun craze, didn't think about it. Um what else can I tell you? Keep your ink nice and juicy. Um, don't worry if something looks a little bit off. Let it dry. Actually, I'm going to bring my heat tool out here to, you know, really let it dry. Now, you saw me take my silhouettes here in black. I think if I do this again, I'm going to blend black on a piece of paper and cut it because black or evening evergreen or whatever you want to say is not the same color as a piece of black cardstock. And we'll deal with it in a second. All right. So I put some um, red here in the middle, little circle lines, as you can say. So, you know, three of them, as you can see. Now I'm going back over with my, or with my a bumblebee and right over the top, scrubbing circles right over the top. Then they blend together. Okay, did not ink up my um, 
my brush and that's okay. I just wanted a tiny bit of darkness up there. Then I'm going to go back over it with my yellow or with my second color. Really blend those things out. After something's dry, I'm going to go back over that area. Brighten it up a little bit more. See what I can do. Right now, I think this looks amazing. But when I was doing it, I thought I needed some more. And that's okay. It can only get brighter, better. And I'm going to I'm going to uh, have the base coat. So my ink's going to kind of like, you know, dissipate in there and blend. Uh, it It's not going to soak right in to the paper so that, you know, it has that little room to bleed out. So as you can see, sometimes I sped things up. Sometimes I put these exactly at 100 speed. So that means one speed. It's not, it's not sped up at all. All right, I'm going to take some purple tape. Purple tape does not work either. So I'm going to grab a piece. Right now I'm going to grab a piece of post-it tape. That didn't work because my panel is stinking, sopping wet. So I'm going to take a heat gun. That still doesn't work. I'm going to add just a piece of cardstock here. Just a leftover piece of cardstock um, to get my blend. But it's still a little juicy, still a little wet. Now, on the left here, I took some water, sprinkled it on, didn't like it. That's why it's to the side. This left one is um, Stampin' Up. The right one is Bristol. I am going to bring them up to you in just a second. All right, we're going to go back with the Stampin' Up basic white cardstock. I'm going to bring in some different colors, some pinks and purples. Okay, so I have Blushing Bride. Blushing Bride does not add anything to your paper. I did re-ink this in just a second. You'll see that I did re-ink it. All I did was get wet ink on my cardstock because my I flooded this ink pad because I wanted to get some Blushing Bride. Well, that's not going to happen. So I have Petal Pink. Fresh Freesia, again, Fresh Freesia doesn't bring very much to the mix. I'm going to put that to the side. Now, blending brushes really does help get your ink all nice and, you know, evened out. So if you want to re-ink your pads, a blending brush is a good way to get ink on your blending brush and, you know, to smooth out your um, ink on your re-inked stamp pad. All right, so this is not doing well, but this is the base layer. And as long as some ink is down there, it's, you know, better than no ink. What was I at? Fresh Freesia. Then I tried some rich Razzleberry and some gorgeous crepe. Uh, you'll see here that I did not play with my colors beforehand. So I'm experimenting with them on my paper and that's okay. But you can also experiment them on a, you know, on a scratch piece of paper a scrap piece of paper and see which colors you like. That's important. You know what I mean? I've been doing this for very long, so a very long time. So I knew that um, Petal Pink wasn't going to give me something, but it was going to give me a base layer. I didn't expect Fresh Freesia to give me much, but I wanted to see. And I didn't need a scrap piece of paper to do that. I decided to do it on my own. All right. So I want a really intense uh, um, pink and I'm adding pockets of pink in here. This is the night sky that I tried to emulate. It's not the right word. Tried to redo. That's not the right word either, but you know what I'm saying? This is the one that I wanted to take a sample from. I should have used blue. Blue probably would have worked better, but I love my gorgeous crepe. And so, you know, Pacific Point would have been a great one here. Um, maybe a little night of navy. Um, yeah. All right. So Fresh Freesia, got my light purple, and it mm, adds some base coat, but it doesn't do much. So I'm not going to work at it. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for bold colors here. I'm not going to spend my time on something that just gives me light color. Did give me a little bit more ink on my paper. Heck, that's always welcome. These are very dark, very bold. I will try one that is um, maybe an ombre effect. But really, all you do is you go from the darkest part, do large circles, start with small circles, go larger each time. Don't re-ink your blender brush. Um, and then you'll have lighter edges because that's just how it works. Start again, do it again. Same color over and over again in 
um, the middle where you want your darkest and light it up and pop it out. I'm sorry, feather it out. Oh, good heavens. I've been talking for 20 minutes. I'm so sorry, guys. I really thought I could do this um, in more than one take, but I, or yeah, but I guess I'm going to do this in one take. All right. So I have a hot mess right here, but I'm not going to give up. You know why? Because it's, first of all, it's, it's going to be better. And second of all, it's giving me practice. Um, I really wanted the blue here, but I already had the purple out and I'm not going to turn around to do anything. I want these pockets of pink and purple. So what do I have to do? I have to go from, um, polished pink to gorgeous grape. Polish pink to gorgeous grape. I'm going to lighten up, brighten up my gorgeous grape. I'm going to darkest my po darken my polished pink. Now, <sighs> blending brushes. If you have only a few, you can try to use a baby brush, a baby wipe, and rinse off your blender brush. But then you're going to have a wet blender brush, and that's mm, okay. Um, size matters. A very small blending brush is going to be a pain in the caboose, like the size of your pinky. That's going to be for very tiny, tiny, tiny areas. Um, larger brushes are going to waste a lot of ink and are just going to give you a different effect. Stampin' Up! has some great blender brushes, but they don't have the only blender brushes. There's a million on the market. Grab one of each. See what you like. Experiment and practice. Bolty, we're not barking here, honey. Okay, I I really like Stampin' Up's blending brushes. They're soft. They're very soft. I gave them to a friend because I knew that they were a good blender brush, and I bought them to see what I thought of them. But I have my set. I really like my colors. You know what I mean? And I like the size of mine because I am um, practice on them. Practice makes perfect. Okay, friends. I don't know how much I can stress that enough. If you if you are struggling with this, you need to blend every day. It's a piece of paper. Throw it away. Make it part of your, you know, every time you craft, I'm going to blend today and I'm going to get a little bit better at it because I'm going to um, go over it with my different colors. I'm going to try different pressures. I'm going to hold my blending brush in the, in the way that's most comfortable for me. And I'm going to go over and scrub. And this is not going to be a one pass. I'm going to put down one layer and call that my base layer. Um, what else can I say? Practice, practice, practice. Try different papers. Please, please start with Stampin' Ups. It has a really nice gloss. You're going to get so much better. If you're using junk paper, you're going to get junk results. I don't know what else to tell you. This um, Bristol Smooth cardstock is available like in Michaels and that kind of stuff. Make sure you get the smooth the smooth um and not vellum. Um check the paper. It's very smooth, but it you're just not gonna like the texture when it comes out. You'll just notice it. And especially if you have a piece of stampin' up paper next to it, you're just gonna be unhappy. But if you can't do anything else, that is one way to do it. But I would still practice on Stampin' Up's paper because it's gonna take the ink differently. You want to get the best results and become a better card maker. This is your craft. Good heavens. Um, if you don't practice and become the best you can be, then you might as well take up gardening. All right, don't take up gardening. Paper crafting is the best craft there is because we give our masterpieces away to make someone else smile. All right, friends, here's where I put a piece of cardstock down and I'm going to use some black. Black. Uh, to do my bottom where the shadow is. Now, it's not really black. It could be navy, night of navy or that dark green, but whatever it is, I'm going to make my silhouettes out of that same color now that I realize that. So I'm going to be blending or direct to paper. And if you don't know what that is, it means, that means you take your stamp pad, you flip it over in your hand, you drag it across the paper a million times until your paper is the darkness of the pad. And then you can fill in with a blender brush if you choose to. Now, notice I have a different brush here because the brushes that I use doesn't have a black one. So I grabbed a different blender brush here. It's smaller than the ones that I do, that I use. You can see right here, there are different size brushes. But that worked for me for black. I don't use black very often, but, you know, I have one for black. All right. So here's my cardstock. 
Here's my blended cardstock. It doesn't look as nice as the oranges and yellows. And do you see that dark to the side? I don't really like it. So I'm going to cut most of it off and say it's done. It looks a million times better than what it looks like in the camera. And it looks a million times better to your eye than it does to mine because I'm a perfectionist. We are when it comes to our own work. So, you know, give yourself a break. It looks gorgeous. Your friends are going to love it, but you can always do better. I um, practice my ink blending with markers because I want to become a better person, a better um, colorist. And you can become a better um, blender, I promise. Blenderist. A blenderist. It's a new word. All right. Going to add my base coat here and then go for it. As you can see, I'm just using a piece of cardstock and I'm going to take very little time here to show you what I'm doing because I'm just making this as black as black can be. Now, could I use um, a piece of black cardstock? I guess if I wanted a second layer, but look at the different, do um, you see that little bit of lightness there? You really can't see it in person, but if you took some time, then heck man, it gives you just a little bit of play on your, on the, you know, light for your eyes. Yes, it's really dark, but there's that little tiny bit of light that you're not going to get with a dark piece of cardstock. So again, my only thought here is that what other, whatever color you want to uh, use on your bottom, use it on your elements. You can see that it's a different color. Doesn't look very nice. I mean, it looks fine, but it's just not perfect. And I'm my own worst enemy, like you probably are too. I'm going to cut these apart and glue them down because I like the way that it looks. Cut three or four of them. Heck, cut them and stack them like I'm going to do on the next one. This stamp set, uh, this die set's gorgeous. The stamp set's um, okay. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not in love with the stamp set, but I got it for one of the images and it's 10% off when you buy it together. So I thought I'd eventually use it. Now I'm going to use a sentiment here and I'm going to put it in the wrong spot. We'll talk about that when I um when I get here. This is a not sticky when dry and dries matte and not sheen. So this is the, what I choose to use on my top elements. Now for my back of my card, Tombow Mono is a great, you know, a great glue. I love how sticky Tombow Mono is. But I don't like how my sticky my hands get, and I don't like using, um, having shininess on my cards. Okay, so on the right here, we have Stamp It Up. On the left, we have Bristol. Do you see it? Do you see how different the ink takes it? I don't know about you, but I don't like it. That's your last resort, but it is something that you'll be able to blend on. I promise. It's the easiest one to blend on. All right. Now I'm going to take my, oh, what do you think this is? A mum maybe? Something. And I'm going to add two together. Now this barely art glue doesn't stay long very, it doesn't stay um, sticky very long. And it was a pain in my butt. So I used Tombow Monic because I was like, screw that. I'm not doing that right now. But I took everything off that I could. I put my finger and, you know, just I there was no amount of oozing. Let's say that I found the cutest little birdies in the Mountain Air stamp set. And yeah, I haven't used it yet, but I could. I will. And it would look amazing with this um, stamp set because, you know, I'm partial to mountains. But look at this. Aren't these birdies cute? All right, friends. It's a very long video. Let me know if you learned anything. I'm a terrible teacher, but I really wanted to try to um, have you guys learn something here. I'm um, doing my best and I need to practice and you're my guinea pigs. Um, let me know if you are a blending perfectionist, what I didn't add. Lots of people can uh, learn from your comments as well. If you're not one to do a video, um, let them know uh, how you do it, uh, you know. Um, uh, we all do our everything differently. This is how I do mine. All right, I'm going to add a sentiment here. I don't like it at all. I should have put it uh, on the top, on the actual, 
you know, sky, not popped up, certainly not in yellow, but I did not like where I put my um, ends, you know, my ends of my, whatever those are, gladiolas or wheat or whatever. I didn't put them at the end of my card. And so, hello, they were just standing in the, in the black spot. I didn't, you know what I mean? I didn't put it down far enough. So they, I covered it. That's, that's what I did. I just, I just covered it with a really great sentiment. And um, yeah, but the sentiment needs to go in the sky in dark black. Uh, and um, if I had to do it again, I do black with white embossing, but I'm certainly not going to do any of the sentiments in the stamp set they're not going to emboss very well. You need detailed, fine embossing. There's just no way. It would never emboss nicely. So, yeah. But these are my panels. Let me know what you think. And you guys have a blessed day. Thanks for staying with me so long. Really appreciate it. I'd love it if you subscribed. Makes my day.